What are promises in ES6? Why do we need them and how do you use them? When you execute a task synchronously, you wait for it to finish before moving on to the next line of code. When you execute a task asynchronously, the program moves to the next line of code before the task finishes. Think of synchronous programming like waiting in line in a queue and asynchronous programming like taking a ticket. When you take a ticket, you can go and do other things and then just be notified when you're ready. One way to program asynchronously is to use callbacks. This is the classic mechanism. We pass to an asynchronous function, a function which it will call when the task is completed. In our example here, we have a function called do async task. It's doing a task, so it's calling a set timeout function. When we call the do async function, it kicks off an asynchronous task and then returns immediately. It doesn't wait for the set timeout function to finish. It doesn't wait the second it's going to take for set timeout to finish. It just returns immediately. So do async task is therefore an asynchronous function. Now, one second later, this inner function to set timeout is going to get called. And to get notified when that asynchronous task completes, we pass to the do async task function, another function, which it will call when the task completes. So we pass to do the do async function, a callback function. I'm calling it CB for short because it calls you back. So when we call do async, we pass in a function, the callback function. Do async then returns immediately and carries on processing, goes to the next line of code. But then one second later, the set timeout function is called. And in the set timeout function, we call the callback function, which is just this one. So then what I'm expected to get printed out on the console is first async task calling callback. It then calls the callback which will then print out callback called. And if you look at the lock console, that's what's happening. First, async task calling callback is called, is printed, and then callback called is printed. And this is the traditional way of handling asynchronous work. When some function is going to do something asynchronously, we pass it a function, which it will call when the asynchronous task completes. And then we have whatever code we need to run after that asynchronous task complete, we stick that in the callback code. But in ES6, we have an alternative mechanism built into the language called a promise. A promise is a placeholder for a future value. It serves the same function as callbacks, but has a nicer syntax and makes it easier to handle errors. Just a quick note though, promises are not a feature of only ES6, we're capable of doing promises and using promises in ES5 JavaScript. But to do that, we've always had to use a third party library like the Q library. But now with ES6, the promise API is going to become a core or is a core part of the JavaScript language. So we don't need to include a third party library to use promises anymore. We'll just be able to use it as part of the standard set of language features. So we create an instance of a promise by calling new on the promise class, like so. Please note, I'm, I'm using the fat arrow syntax for all of my anonymous functions in, in all the sample code from this point forward. We pass the promise an inner function as the first parameter. And this inner function takes two arguments, resolve and reject. Since we are defining the function ourselves, we can call these arguments whatever we want. I could call them um, asim and mu if I wanted to. But the convention is to call them resolve and reject. Inside this inner function, we perform our asynchronous processing. And then when we are ready, we call resolve. So if we were doing the same set timeout functionality, Instead of where we previously called callback, we now just call resolve instead. And we usually return this promise instance from a function. 
So let's say it's our do async task function. If there was an error in the asynchronous task, then we would call the reject function instead. So let's create. So if we have an error, we call the reject function. If everything happened okay, we call the resolve function. So that's how we can create a promise. How do we get notified when a promise resolves? We can get notified when a promise resolves by attaching a success handler to its then function, like so. So now if I run the file, we have the same functionality as before. So now when we call do async task, we create a promise and we pass it a function body. It executes that function body immediately, but then also returns the promise straight away as well. When any asynchronous processing is completely in the inner body, we then call resolve. And when we call resolve, then it calls whatever was passed into the then handler. And because we passed into the then handler, this callback called function, that's why we see callback called underneath. So in effect, we have exactly the same functionality as callbacks, but just implemented using promises. However, this is where things start to differ versus callbacks, because then can take two arguments. The second argument is an error handler that gets called if the promise is rejected. So let me pass in two arguments to the then handler. The first one is the success callback, and the second one is the error callback. So let me call the first one task success, and task error. And so now if I flip this has error boolean to true, we have task error printed out to the console because now we're calling the error handler that we've attached to our then function. And also any values we pass to the resolve and reject functions are also passed along to the error and success handlers. So if we pass to reject a string called, let's call it error, and we pass to resolve a string, let's call it done. These are then passed to the success and error handlers as parameters. So let's say that's val, that's the success handler. Let's now print out val, and this is the error handler. I'm gonna call that parameter err. I'm gonna print out err here, and let's print out as an error. That makes more sense. So now when I run our application, we have an error printed to the console. Now remember, I've set has error to true. So if that's false, then the success handler is going to get called and I should expect done to be printed to the console. We can also create an immediately resolved promise by using the promise.resolve method like so. so. Let me comment all of this out. And as well as the immediately resolved promise, we could also create an immediately rejected promise by using promise.reject. But one of the nice things about promises in ES6 is that if we add a then handler after the promise resolves or rejects, the handler still gets called. So let me just show you. So on line eight, we're still printing done. Even though the promise has resolved before we added the success handler, the promise framework still calls the success handler. That's really useful when dealing with asynchronous tasks. If the asynchronous task completes before we have a chance to add the then handler with the promise framework, it still calls the functions in your then handler. If we were implementing this using callbacks, we wouldn't have that capability. We can also connect a series of then handlers together in a chain like so. I'm just gonna copy and paste this code in. 
And let's delete that handle at the bottom. So now we see done printed out. So that's from line eight. So this success handler gets called, we print out done, and then we return done to from this then handler. That gets passed to the next then handler. So on line 14, we then print out done to. Promises pass an error along the chain till it finds an error handler. So we don't actually need to define an error handler for each then function. We can just add one at the end like so. So if we then throw an exception from our promise function or one of the success handlers in the chain, the promise gets rejected and the error handler is called. The last error handler in the chain is called. So if in the first handler here, let's throw new error fail. And now if we run this, we see on line 13, which is the error handler, the error handler here, it still gets called and the error gets printed to the console. The catch function works exactly the same way as the then error handler. It's just clearer and more explicitly describes our intent to handle errors. So instead of having an error handler in one of our then functions in the chain, at the very end of a chain, we typically just put a catch function. And then that just makes our chain just a lot easier to read. It's very, very clear to see that this line here, this is where we catch errors. We don't have to read through every then handler to see if that's handling the error. Just by having a catch function, it just makes it really, really clear, right? That's where we handle our error handling code. So in summary, promises are a far cleaner solution to writing asynchronous code than callbacks. The resulting code that's created is easier to read and is often written in the order the application will execute the code. So with callbacks, we often have to jump to different lines of code in our application as we're tracing through what's going on. When using a promise chain, it's fairly clear what's going on and the code is being executed more or less in the order that it's written in on the page. And that makes it easier to trace through code in your head. And with the catch handler, it also gives us a single place where we can handle errors. So, so far in this section, we've just been looking at ES6 only features. And in the next lecture on classes and interfaces, we're going to start looking at TypeScript features as well. So TypeScript only features. So if you haven't set up the TSC compiler on your computer, go back to the, one of the first lectures in this section and make sure you've set it up. Because we won't be using Plunker to execute that code. We'll be using the TypeScript command line tool to translate the code to JavaScript. And we're going to be executing it locally on your computer with Node.